Hello there, a very warm welcome to Ulster University's Virtual Open Day 2021. Rebecca and I are delighted to have been invited back uh, to host this year's event as it was such good crack last year, wasn't it Bex? Yeah, I'm delighted they had us back. We had an absolute ball and this year's Open Day is shaping up to be even bigger and better. There's an action-packed programme of activities coming up today all about Destination Ulster and we're so glad that you could join us to be a part of it. We'll share more about the main stage lineup a little bit later on, but before that, we just wanted to tell you a little bit about our experiences uh, of Ulster University. Both myself and Rebecca are proud graduates of UU, and I know I have so many special memories of my time at uni. Can you remember your time at uni? It was so long ago. No, it wasn't that long ago now, to be fair. Uh, I, um, I graduated uh, with International Business Studies from the Coleraine campus, 2-1. Uh, just saying. I'm shocked as well. <laughs> did you actually do any work or did you just party the whole time and DJ? I, I got, I, I was very fortunate on the basis that I got a real mixture. So I studied, I had to study, um, but I had, uh, I had a lot of time to perfect my DJing, <laughs> put on a few nights at the Union, play a bit of sport, played varsity hockey for a short time. Um, but the North Coast is a brilliant place to, to be at university. And the best thing about it was that I didn't really fully appreciate the surroundings where I was studying until I got there. And then it was just brilliant. It was really, really good. So I'd highly, highly recommend it. And you came to Ulster for your master's? Yeah, I did. I did my master's in communication, advertising and PR here. And it was something that really led me into the media landscape and made me fall in love with now what I'm doing as a career. So I met a lot of really, really good friends throughout my time at Jordanstown. And then it led me to this and here we are yeah. back here chatting to you and on Cool FM for six days a week, which is a bit scary. And the thing about it is as well is that the university experience, no matter what, what course you're doing, um, gives you so, so many more skills than just what it says on the certificate. Yeah, completely. I was a bit lost, to be honest with you, whenever I started doing my master's. I wasn't sure what way my career path was going to go. And then when I joined this course, it opened up so many doors for me about what potential employment could look like. And for you watching at home or wherever you are right now, uh, the opportunity for you is just around the corner. So hopefully today we'll give you a bit more of an insight into what Ulster has to offer and maybe this place will be for you. So you might be sitting there feeling excited and confident about your university journey or like me you might be feeling a little bit confused and anxious as I was at the time but no matter how you're feeling it's going to be good. Today is all about helping you to explore and discover what you use all about and to help you decide what the right options are for you. The academic and support teams at Ulster are here for you every step of the way and are available to chat to you throughout the day through the chat facility on the website. There's also lots of great information already on the site, so make sure to check it out. So by registering and attending the Open Day today, you've been entered into the prize draw to win exclusive Ulster branded sportswear for you and your classmates. It looks really cool. Okay, so we've told you about our time at Ulster University. Now it's time to hear from some recent graduates about their experiences of Ulster's courses, campuses, support services and student life. First in the hot seat, we have Philip with us today. How are you? I'm doing well. Glad to be here. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Welcome back. Do you miss this place? I mean, it's been quite some time since I've been on a university campus, so it's very good to be back. <laughs> uh, tell us about the course you did. So I studied business economics and marketing, um, did a four year course there. Um, I think I was like many others when I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So there was a course with business economics and marketing, three quite different subjects, but all within my kind of business interests. So uh, um, take, take, take us back to whenever you were making that choice. How difficult a decision was it, first and foremost, to choose the course? And, and why did you think that this was the place for you whenever you were still at school? Yeah, exactly. I think I was like many others when I kind of had two big questions what do I want to do at university and where do I want to kind of go and do it and study it. Um, so I knew I kind of had an interest in business um, and especially economics. So I kind of knew I wanted to go towards that area, but seeing something, you know, with the addition of marketing was like, oh, there's another thing I can kind of learn and kind of work a bit more in and enjoy as well. And then it's that question of, you know, do I want to go overseas? Do I want to kind of stay at home? And for me, I found a really good balance of, I can still move away from home to Belfast to go to UU. Um, but also kind of, you know, you're close enough to the home comforts as well and, you know, the friends that you've had 
from things like school while also meeting new university friends. So it was a very good balance for me. So you talk about meeting new people and you were involved in the Ulster University Consulting Society. This sounds very highbrow. Tell <laughs> us a little bit about what this actually means. So I came back into uh, final year from placement um, and I had a very good friend of mine from placement and he was part of the Irish Student Consulting Group. So uh, this was like a national wide society. So I was very fortunate to join that as a first UU student. Um, and kind of work with different businesses and charities um, on a student consulting basis. And I really loved it. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna start a branch within the university. So I set up the Austria University Consulting Society um, as a branch of the ISCG. And then we're also involved now with CSRM, which works with international charities in places like India and Lebanon and stuff. So it's all just kind of blew up a little bit, but it was an absolutely brilliant experience and I've met some incredible people kind of through it all and I'm still very much in communication with them all and very good friends now, so it's a great experience for me. We're really under-accomplished now in comparison <laughs> to you. <laughs> so you did a placement year um, and, and that's one of the great things about Ulster courses, yeah. loads of them have placement years, so you, you went to PwC, tell us a bit about that. Yes, yeah, so I went to PwC and became a digital strategy intern within the capability and development team. I've actually just came in from the new office today. Um, here as well, so I'm still there and still enjoying it. So you so graduated and then you got a job? Uh, straight off yes, the Yes, pretty much. So I did my placement year, had a great experience. They were very, uh, I was very fortunate to be offered uh, part-time work within the same team during my final year. So I worked one day a week there and then I've been able to continue that role now into the graduate uh, programme as well. So, I mean, I've had an absolutely brilliant experience and like loved my time. In PwC, there was just so many opportunities and kind of ways of developing and learning new things. And as I said, meeting new people, that's always the big one. And we talk about placement years. As a student, how difficult was it to be placed with PwC? I found um, it kind of all very well supported. So we had a lot of talks in second year about kind of employability and you know preparing for placement year, building your CV and things like that. We had the employability hub, uh, which had kind of all of the options of like where we could apply to and what was relevant to us as well, which really helped. Um, so obviously did do quite a few applications as well, but very fortunately got PwC, found the whole process very easy, and then having it secured was such kind of a great thing. And then having the graduate job secured from that as well after it was a big weight off in final year. Amazing, and it sounds like you really invested in your time here, and in turn, you, you invested in you. So for anyone who is watching right now, what advice would you give about people making university choices? It's a very good question. It's actually a conversation I had with my cousin two weeks ago who's looking to go to university. Um, I'd say never, I suppose, you kind of know what interests you, and that helps kind of determine what courses you choose, but I, always don't, I don't think any course really limits you very much. I think people kind of get worried that if they go down one route, they're that's them kind of dropped off so many others. Um, I think take advantage of as many opportunities as possible from the start. I think I kind of wish I, you know, took kind of more things like internships, joined societies earlier, you know, worked with more people and did more projects in maybe my first or second year uh, compared to my final year. So take every opportunity possible from the start as well and just enjoy it. <laughs> That's great advice. Well, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for having me. We now like to welcome Connor to the conversation. You were pretty decided on what you wanted to do for university. Tell us what your degree course was and why you chose it. Uh, so I studied Cinematic Arts in McGee. I absolutely loved it. Um, so an A-level, I always had a real interest in uh, acting and filming and studied moving image arts. So when I got the A-levels and applying for universities, I was looking online at different courses in filmmaking. Um, so I seen Cinematic Arts was voted number one by The Guardian in the UK. So I thought that was fantastic, because I thought I was going to have to relocate across the waters. Um, so seeing this course was here, I thought brilliant. So I went up to the open day, absolutely loved it. I kind of thought that, I'm, I'm from our class originally, so it was, it was about 100 miles from home roughly. Um, so it kind of gave me home comforts, but at the same time I could have like a new beginning as such. Um, and being up in the course and studying cinema arts, absolutely loved it. Uh, great opportunity. Being up in Derry, up in the northwest, what was it like as a city to, to, to really look oh, Fantastic, um, especially for the arts. There's a lot of um, fun in between like the nerve centre and there's a lot of other kind of like arts style of things. Um, I feel that um, being up in a city as well, um, from being in a village, it's, it's a real kind of change of scenery. Um, but at the same time, I found that the, the, the campus life and just the, the city in general, there's a real kind of like homely, welcoming vibe to it. So student placement, 
Yeah. You have an interesting one. Yeah, I did, all right. Um, so I did a, a placement with Manchester United Foundation. Oh, um, now Pete, this is a big Liverpool fan here. Oh. Don't, don't get annoyed. <laughs> don't get annoyed. The foundation does amazing work. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Um, so they have a partnership that they have now for two years now with the University of Ulster McGee campus. Um, so I applied for the placement and I was over the moon when I got it. Um, so I started working as doing content creating. So they would do a lot of work with schools and um, primary and secondary both um, in the foil area. Um, and a lot of the work they would do is um, like helping show not just the football side of things, but like the business side of football as well. And um, they inspire a lot of young children. So what I did, um, I went out with the coordinators and took a few videos. Um, we got one day, I went out to the McGee uh, Hall and took videos with like different skills videos for the kids. Um, and then from this, I made my own documentary from the final piece that I was able to release then. And we're just in the middle of sending off to the film festivals now. So hopefully, yeah. And here's the thing, right? I'm going to put you in the spot here right now. And you've recently only graduated, but if you were to do it all again, would you do the same thing? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I feel that the opportunities that I got from Ulster and the, the support from the staff is fantastic um, and even just like the network of, and friends that I've made from uni that are all like-minded like and, and wanting to do the same thing I feel uh, it's just been absolutely fantastic yeah had a blast. And if you were going to give one piece of advice to anyone who's watching this right now who's considering coming to university to do a course like this what would it be? I would say do what you think is right for yourself. One of the, the things I found when I was leaving school, so I'm at a school in Newcastle and a lot of my friends all went to either Belfast or over the water as like a group of friends, whereas I went to McGee by myself. And at the, like for the, a while going up on the road and stuff, I was kind of a bit nervous, but within 10, 15 minutes of getting there, I made friends that I've like, I lived with now for the past two years and I consider my best friends. Um, I feel that putting yourself out there and doing, like taking every opportunity like definitely go for every opportunity you can. Connor, thank you so much um, for giving us your story. Good luck for the future going forward. We cannot wait to see your work on the big screen. Thanks very much for having me. Next up, we have Thea. You're very welcome. Hello. Good to thank see you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and telling us all about your university story. So of course. first up, where did you study? What campus? And what did you study? I studied Korean, doing environmental science. My old stomping ground. Good part of the world to study. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And whenever you, whenever you moved there, did you live in halls at the start? Of yeah, so I lived at Cremor, which was uh, technically off campus, but it was just across the road from the campus. And then in Port Stewart in second and third year. And how did you find the experience of living away from home for the first time? I'm sure that was really daunting and meeting loads of new people. Yeah, it, I thought I think it's a really good way of meeting new people because everybody's in the same boat, you know. So um, it's a really good way to make new friends straight away. So yeah. So tell us about environmental science. Why was that the course for you? I really like geography and I really like science, so it's a good combination of the both of them. Um, and it's a really practical course, which was good. I like that aspect of it. And in terms of the course, was it everything that you imagined it to be? Yeah, uh -huh, definitely. Um, we got to go on field trips and stuff, which was really good, getting to um, put what we learnt in lectures into actual practice, you know. And tell us a little bit about your placement here, because it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I was at Ulster Wildlife for placement, um, so we just basically, I was in the office one day a week, and then the rest of the days I would be out on their nature reserves doing practical conservation all around Northern Ireland, so yeah, it was cool. Now, something that has come up throughout um, our broadcast today is not just the educational background that Ulster gave you, but in terms of the services that, and the support it gives students, you know, you had um, a lot of support with dyslexia yeah, uh -huh. during your time I'm here. Dyslexic, Can you tell us a wee bit yeah. more about that and, how, and how, how the university helped? Yeah, so that was one of the very first things that Ulster did for me. Um, I got the test just to confirm that I am dyslexic and then straight away they got me in with the student support and they got me a dyslexia coach and I had her throughout my four years at the uni and she went above and beyond for me, she was so, so helpful. Um, and I also got extra time in exams and uh, a lot of like uh, technology to assist um, with coursework and stuff, like reading material and software on my laptop and things. So it was really, really helpful. And in terms of your personal development, mm -hmm. that really, really helped my confidence with everything, doing exams, doing coursework, all that, yeah. So initially, you weren't sure that university was for you. Yeah. What was it about Ulster that changed your mind? 
I really liked the course, just the practical element, especially with my dyslexia. I thought that was so much better, you know, um, like a learning experience for me. Uh, and I also liked the fact that I could stay at home but get to move away and get some independence. And I think it just makes the experience overall. So I was like you. <laughs> I, I, I love going up the road, but I can yeah. still go home at the yeah, weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get your washing exactly. done. Needs to be, absolutely, 100%. <laughs> a lot of people watching this right now will maybe not have a, a clue what yeah. they're going to do next year and be very anxious about it. What would you uh, advise them? I would say that everybody's in the same boat. You're not definitely not alone. I know that it can be really, really daunting and thinking, oh my gosh, like going to a new place or moving in with different people, but just everybody is in the same position as you, so just not to worry about it so much. Well, Thea, you're a fabulous ambassador for us <laughs> University. Thank you so much for giving Thank up your time you. today to come and see us, and good luck for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now to our final student today. He's graduated from Ulster University. It's Dylan, you're very welcome. Really happy to be here, thank you. Right, so you studied international hospitality and tourism. I believe you loved the course. I really did, yeah. Um, I just loved the course because, um, you know, I studied things like tourism, um, which is, um, like, I thought that came from my interest in languages at school because I did those for my A-levels. I did French and Spanish and also home economics. Um, so I just thought hospitality was a good sort of combination of all of those, you know, the culinary side of things and being able to use my languages for tourism. And then mixing that, mixing that with business studies as well, it just gave an all around good area to go into then. So I'm excited to hear about this. You were one of the lucky ones that was selected for Ulster's Study USA programme. Tell us what you got up to there. So I got, I got up to a lot of things there. Um, so I went to Philadelphia on the east coast of America and went to Immaculata University because it offered a lot of um, classes and extracurricular activities that really interested me. So I had to study some business classes as part of the um, Study USA program because that's, that's the main requirement uh, is what, what you have to do. Um, but I, I managed to focus it more on fashion and merchandising classes like mixed with business because um, I've always been interested in fashion and stuff. And that also um, made me sort of, you know, like figure out what I want to do more in the future now. It sounds to me that whenever you, you went away and actually went to the States, I'm sure it was a daunting experience, you know, actually moving over there, but it really brought you out of yourself. Yeah, it really did because, you know, before I went to my study abroad year, like I was just so lost in myself and I had a lot of, you know, things going on in my personal life that weren't so good. but. Um, when I went to America then, like, that's when I really um, like, I tried to settle in as much as I can and I made a lot of lifelong friends from there. And I just really found myself by you know, studying the other things that I love and I also got, got back into my um, interest of dancing as well. Well, we could ask you to bust to move, but I want to hear a little, <laughs> Pete would just be jealous because you'd be able to dance better than him. So I want to hear a little bit about all the support that was offered by the university's academic staff and student wellbeing team. How critical was that support for you from the university throughout your time? So it was very critical for me because, um, as I already mentioned there, I did have a few you know, personal issues going through university, more so during first year and like the first half of second year. Um, just things going on at home. So I managed to get in contact with the student wellbeing team and I was just able to go in and speak with them and discuss any issues that I have and they offered me, you know, different services that I can use, like counselling services, just any kind of support groups that I can go into. So that, that really benefited my mental health at that point. There's, there's one thing that keeps on coming through with each person we have spoken to today and that's the support of the university and it's not just about the course, it's everything else uh, around it. F for those people watching at home right now who are maybe a bit confused, not really knowing you know, what the future holds, where they should go, what they should study, I mean, it's, it's a, it, we, we were all there, it's a difficult time in your life. What advice would you give to year 14 students right now? So the advice I would give is number one, that you only live once, like that's my main saying for everyone, you know, you only live once, take every opportunity that you're given, and especially if you have an opportunity to go abroad, Go and do it and broaden your horizons, experience a different culture and a different way of living. Excellent. Well, Dylan, thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you for sharing your story. We're delighted you had a brilliant time at Ulster and you really made uh, full use of everything that came your way. Okay, thank you so much.
Now, as we all know, the ultimate goal of going to uni is to get a graduate job, albeit having lots of fun and experiencing student life along the way. Ulster University places employability at the heart of the student experience and provides all students with the opportunities and support they need to develop into highly employable graduates. We are now joined by Ashley McConaughey, Talent Acquisition Lead from the Almac Group, to tell us about what makes Ulster graduates so employable. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you, Pete. Good oh, to see you. Yeah. And um, you too. Almac, of course, have been recruiting Ulster graduates for donkey's years now. Yes. What, what makes the Ulster graduate um, the ideal candidate for you? So we recognise at Almac Group that, you know, the graduates come with more than just that certificate. So university, um, the university life, it's, it's an experience in itself. So we're finding that lots of graduates are coming with those transferable skills that are really attractive to us as an employer. So for example, we're finding that graduates are coming with really good presentation skills, um, communication skills, leadership skills, that ability to be able to independently plan and organize their own workloads. Um, those skills are so, so valuable to an employer and they're definitely life skills that you can transfer from university as well as that certificate at the very end of it. So we find that really attractive. The Almac Group is renowned for being a global leader in biotechnology, but can you tell us a little bit about the different careers the students and graduates can be employed in? So many people, they always have that perception that to work somewhere like the Almac Group, you need to be a scientist or you need to be coming in to wear that white coat in the labs. But that perception could be, it's nowhere further from the truth. Um, we're a major growing organisation, so we have offer careers right across the, the, the spectrum. So for example, in human resources, marketing, IT, engineering, of course we have those scientific careers as well, the chemists, the biologists that really make our business work, but you can rest be assured there's probably a career option out there for everyone. So for those at home watching, what advice would you give to year 14 students about making their choice about what courses they're going to do with their uni career? So what I would say first of all is if you're thinking of choosing a career or a, a qualification or a degree subject at this time, you know, pick something that you're really going to enjoy. You know, you, you want something there that's going to motivate you to want to learn and develop. Um, also as well, I would say try to be open um, keep an open mind um, as well because career opportunities are so diverse at the moment. So for example, we have students that are coming in maybe with qualifications in science subjects, but they're coming in to start to work in areas such as project management, human resources even as well. So keep your career options open in that way, but also um, if you can, try and consider a course that offers you a placement year. We find that students really get a lot out of that placement year because they're getting that on the job training with the employer. They're gaining experience, you know, in many occasions they're also getting that offer of a conditional offer of permanent employment once they graduate so as an employer when we are seeing students come and us who have that mix of experience and a qualification it's, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you Pete. We're delighted to also have Claire Brannan, talent partner from FinTrue, with us today to give her perspective on student and graduate talent from Ulster. Claire, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about FinTrue and your experience with Ulster University graduates. Yeah, so FinTrue was established back in 2013 um, by our CEO and founder, Dara McCarthy. Um, and he saw that after the financial crisis, a lot of regulation was coming into the industry and the banks were having to deal with that. So he came up with a brainwave and created FinTrue and our company basically take on those regulatory compliance processes uh, for the banks uh, from here in Northern Ireland. So we have a base in Belfast, we've got offices in the Northwest, offices in New York and London as well and really the world's the limit um, and we'll, we'll see that in the next few years. So you, you, obviously you have Ulster graduates who are on the staff and you've taken students from Ulster on placement. So what are you looking for in terms of a student from Ulster coming into the FinTrue family? Yeah, definitely. My role as talent partner, I would be sort of the first face that, that our graduates see when they come in either through a placement or a graduate program. And we have lots of university or Ulster University um, analysts with us. Uh, what we look for is an ambition to learn. I think Ulster fosters that really well through all of the degrees that, that they offer and the sort of presentation work and teamwork that all of the uh, students go through. 
So Fintrue has students and graduates from a wide range of disciplines, but can you give us an idea of opportunities that are available with different roles within your organisation to them? Yeah, so we, we hire from all disciplines because everyone has something to offer. I mean, one of our behaviours is to be unique and everyone's accepted for the skills that they bring to Fintrue. Um, I'm a mathematics graduate. I started alongside, you know, graduates from biomedical science and, and they've all had something to offer in our projects. Um, the types of opportunities, I suppose, across placements and graduates are um, in those business areas that we have. So technology, um, we've got risk, we've got legal um, and project management consultancy work as well. Um, so all those opportunities are available to students um, as they join us through the placement and graduate programmes. So there's a wide range of options um, for students with the likes of yourselves at, at Fintrue. Speak to our year 14 students now who are thinking about the next step and actually picking a course is really, really, really difficult. So what advice would you give them? Yeah, I think even looking back to when I was picking a course, pick something you enjoy because you're going to be doing it for three years and, and something that you're fairly good at as well that you think you're, you're competent enough in to get a good grade. I mean, we accept graduates from a 2-2 two, two, two and above. Placement year, recommend it? Definitely, I did a placement year and I think the main thing for me was uh, just the professional skills that you gain, the confidence to speak to senior stakeholders in the business. Um, it gives you incentive as well to do better in your final year at uni. You know what you're working towards and, and what you're gonna go into after uni. Claire, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Whether you're studying in the heart of Belfast city centre at the brand new state-of-the-art Belfast campus, on the beautiful north coast at the Coleraine campus, or in the heart of the culturally vibrant McGee campus in Derry, Londonderry, Ulster's campuses and facilities are second to none. Here's just a flavour of what each of the Ulster University campuses has to offer. Why would you want to leave our wee country to go away to study when you have all of this on your doorstep? So at this stage you may have an idea about what career path you would like to take and which subject you would like to study or maybe you're still not quite sure. The great thing about today is that you can find out all you need to know about the diverse range of courses that Ulster has to offer and get the information you need to decide which course is right for you. Later today, you'll be able to delve into the subject-specific talks hosted by the experts and ask any questions you have. But for now, here's a snapshot of Ulster's four faculties and what they have to offer.
So now that we've given you a whistle-stop tour of all things Destination Ulster, you can now get involved in loads. There's loads more on the main stage throughout the rest of the day. Check out the Focus Subject Talks and join the live sessions with our support teams throughout today where you can find out all about the student experience at Ulster. These kick off with employability, followed by student union, accommodation, student well-being, sports, library and admissions. And finally, don't forget to attend one of the live Q&A sessions. Get those questions at the ready. And for all the parents and guardians watching, we'll have all the information you need to support your young person through the whole process, including fees and finance, UCAS application info, and the support available to you. It is all going on today, but don't worry if you miss anything. All the sessions will be available on the website for the next few months, so you can watch them at a time that suits you. Happy days. We are so glad that you've joined us today. Many thanks to UU for allowing us to be part of this fantastic event and for helping us relive our uni days. Make sure to follow at Ulster Uni on Instagram to keep up to date with all things Ulster. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Good luck and we'll see you soon.